Good Sunday afternoon, everyone. Welcome back here to Weather on the Go. My name is Hunter, and in today's afternoon update, we're going to update you on what is to come for the weather for the rest of this Sunday afternoon into Sunday night with the temperatures and precipitation. And we are growing more concerned that we have a moderate risk of severe weather, especially across the plains on Monday with strong and violent long track tornadoes possible, destructive hail, and some hurricane force wind gusts will be going over everything that you need to know about Monday and even Tuesday and Wednesday severe weather threat the rest of the week as well. We'll be diving into all of the details that you need to know in today's afternoon update. So if you are not a subscriber here to Weather on the Go, make sure you do press the subscribe button so we can keep you ahead of all of the storms this week and beyond through the rest of 2024 in today's video as well. Make sure to press the like button down below. It helps out more than you know to get all of the this weather information, even about the severe weather out to more and more people. So let's look at the high temperatures this afternoon, a nice spring like day across most of the contiguous United States, especially across the Rockies region, the plains, across the Midwest, the East, very warm down here in the Southeast though, from Florida up into Georgia and Alabama, mid even upper eighties this afternoon. Now looking at the surface map this afternoon and tonight, we have a frontal boundary draped across the Ohio Valley the Mid-South and down here towards Texas, that will be the focal point for lift to get some showers and thunderstorms to spark this afternoon and tonight. We do still have those marginal, even slight risks for severe weather from parts of the eastern Ohio Valley up here and then all the way down into the lower Mississippi Valley, still hanging on to that slight risk down here in South Texas. We do have to be concerned about some very large hail over two inches in diameter across southwestern and south central Texas this afternoon and this evening, along with a 60 mile per hour wind gust or two as well, and the threat for a couple of tornadoes, especially across portions of the Mississippi River area down here in the lower Mississippi Valley, down into portions of, say, the Lake Charles region in Louisiana, Houston, down to Victoria and Corpus Christi, and that will stretch westward there toward the San Antonio region as we go through the rest of today. So this afternoon, a complex of showers and storms here across the mid-Mississippi Valley to lower Mississippi Valley. Some reigniting showers and storms across south-central Texas. We'll have to watch for those severe storms with those hail, wind, and a couple tornadoes this afternoon. A lot of energy out west as well. That's our new storm system we'll be talking about for Monday momentarily. But then you can see we have another bit of showers and storms across the Memphis region. Jonesboro, Arkansas, up there toward Paducah, Nashville there in the Music City as we go into this evening. And then that'll kind of dwindle as it moves toward the Ohio and Tennessee River Valley early Monday morning to start your day. So some heavier rainfall can be expected in and around the Memphis region, say Jackson, Tennessee, over there toward Nashville, Tupelo, Mississippi, some of those areas impacted by the heaviest of rains through your Monday morning commute could be seeing over an inch of rain in some of those locations in the mid and the lower Mississippi Valley. Also, some heavier precipitation out west. The higher elevations, though, will be seeing some heavier snowfall through Monday. Now, that's the storm system we are keeping an eye on as we go into Monday. Negatively tilted trough here. And whenever you see a negatively tilted trough this time of year in May, that spells trouble. And we have a moderate risk. This is a level four out of five here on the risk scale from southern Kansas into west central Oklahoma, and a large, slight, and enhanced risk in the yellow an orange shaded color with a two out of five in the yellow, a three out of five in the orange respectively. And the biggest threats tomorrow is actually gonna be the very large, if not giant hailstones that could be anywhere from two inches to up to four inches in diameter, folks. Yes, some of these hailstones tomorrow could surpass softball size, especially in this 45% area here in southern Kansas and into west central Oklahoma. And then we're keeping an eye on the tornado risk. We have a 10 to a 15% probability of some strong to potentially even violent long track tornadoes. Those are your EF2 or greater strength tornadoes across east central Kansas down into much of Oklahoma here, but the tornado threat even extends up there into eastern Nebraska, parts of southeastern South Dakota, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, even down into North Texas. So we still have to watch those areas as well. 
And as those storms grow upscale into a squall line overnight on Monday into Tuesday, that will start to lead to more hurricane force wind gusts closer to the Kansas City area, Topeka, down to Wichita, and Tulsa. As we go into the overnight hours, wind gusts up to around 80 miles per hour may be possible. So why are we seeing this? Let's look at the setup here with the latest data from the 12Z HRRR model. And you can see the dew points will be well into the 60s all the way up there into Nebraska and Kansas, 70 degree dew points, very rich moisture in the low levels of the environment across Oklahoma, even North Texas. Now, with that said, we have some very strong and extreme instability here across Southern Kansas, but especially Oklahoma and Texas with southward extent, even though we have the strong and extreme instability in North Texas, the question then becomes, will the cap erode later in the day that far south? It's likely to erode into Kansas and Oklahoma, but further south into North Texas, the cap may hold on stronger. Now, why we're concerned about this is the 850 millibar low-level jet Monday afternoon will already be over 55 knots here into the central and southern plains. That will contribute already to values up to tens out of tens on the max for the significant tornado parameter space for Kansas, but also also parts of Oklahoma, but we're concerned that as the low level jet starts to strengthen Monday evening, over 70 knots folks across Kansas, Oklahoma into Missouri, that's where those values will really peak up to 25, even 26s out of 10s. This is about as high of an environment for tornado potential as you can get folks. So a high risk of severe weather may be issued as we do get closer. So let's look here at the timing of the storms in general, Monday morning, warm air Infection from the Gulf of Mexico is going to be destabilizing the environment out here in the central and southern plains. As we go through the afternoon, we're talking mid to late afternoon, that cap further north will erode very quickly from Nebraska into central Kansas and western Oklahoma. Further south into North Texas, the capping inversion will hold on a lot longer. And you can see as we go into the evening, the southern flank of this line could have more semi-discrete, if not flat out discrete supercells. Those would be the ones to produce those strong to violent long track tornadoes across Oklahoma there, even southeastern Kansas. More of a solid squall line with those hurricane force wind gusts to 80 miles an hour further north. That will move east. It'll slowly weaken as it moves through the Midwest into the mid-Missouri Valley early Tuesday morning, but still packing a punch here as it gets closer to the Quad Cities region there and into Iowa, into the Quincy, Illinois and St. Louis area down here towards Little Rock. We'll have to keep an eye on those folks as we go into early Tuesday morning. This will also be bringing some heavier rainfall, so make no mistake about it. Flash flooding will also be an issue here, especially up toward the Midwest there especially western Iowa, eastern Nebraska, those areas from, I would say, Omaha to Des Moines, down there towards St. Joseph and Kansas City, Missouri, Topeka, down toward Wichita. We have to keep an eye on that slight risk for flash flooding Monday into your Tuesday morning commute. Going into Tuesday, very strong jet streak across the middle of the country will set up more severe weather, this time further east. It's been a while since we've had severe weather in the Ohio and Tennessee River Valley. Well, that's coming back on Tuesday. We currently have a slight risk of severe weather here in Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, down into Tennessee. That stretches back into northern Mississippi, Missouri, and central Arkansas. And you can see Tuesday afternoon, storms start to get going. More scattered coverage Tuesday afternoon, and then we'll see that become more numerous Tuesday night as maybe a mesoscale convective system may start to bring more of a damaging wind and hail risk, but some tornadoes may be possible there. What happens on Tuesday could feed into what happens on Wednesday. It's still a strong jet streak across the middle of the country, a larger area of a slight risk relative to Tuesday on your Wednesday, May the 8th time frame across much of the Ohio and Tennessee River Valley, the mid and even lower Mississippi Valley, stretching back to Texas and Oklahoma in the Southern Plains. And there could be an area in here from the Ohio and Tennessee River Valley back toward the mid Mississippi Valley on Wednesday that could have higher probabilities of an enhanced, maybe even a moderate risk as we do get closer because we have semi-discrete supercells starting to to develop here across that region Wednesday afternoon, posing a risk for hail, wind, and tornadoes. And then we see that become a little bit more scattered. A couple areas down here and toward the south we'll have to watch. And then up near the warm front there in the Ohio River Valley, we'll have to watch going in even into Wednesday night. And going into Thursday, even though that low moves up into Ohio, still a cold front attached to it. 
across the south could be bringing us some severe weather across Dixie Alley and the southeast coast by Thursday. And then by Friday, more of a rain event across the northeast New England and the mid-Atlantic states. That cold front will be more diffuse and moving off the Gulf Coast and will finally be able to quiet down as we get into that Friday time frame. But a lot of rainfall on the way, folks, between now and Friday, May 10th. Definitely be watching out for flash flooding in addition to the severe weather threat here east of the plains. Definitely into the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, the southeast, and then even the northeast that we get just plain rain. We could be seeing a mount stacking up there in Pennsylvania, New York State, New Jersey, parts of Delaware there, even up into Massachusetts and Connecticut, over two or three inches as we go through Friday. So watching out for that. Now, a big pattern change is in the offing as we go into the following weekend here on Friday, May 10th through Tuesday, the following week on May 14th. Below normal temperature anomalies uh, east of the Rockies and west of the Rockies here in the Pacific Northwest in particular, closer to the Cascades and even the Sierras and much of the West Coast, seeing above normal temperature anomalies there. Drying out, though, across the Pacific Northwest and much of the North that stretches through the Midwest down into the mid-Mississippi Valley and much more active weather with an activated subtropical jet across the Four Corners region, the Del, uh, Del Marva or the Del Marva region over here, down into the southeast here, and even towards portions of Texas. So we'll keep a close eye on that. And looking at the dew point temperatures next weekend, Saturday, May 11th, and a Sunday, May 12th, yeah, it's going to be hard pressed to see any widespread severe weather outbreaks with dew points this low. Very dry environment, I would imagine. We'll be seeing a lot of sunshine next weekend across the board. And if we did have severe weather, it would be very isolated here and limited to mainly the Gulf Coast region. So we'll be able to watch out for that. Folks, now is the time to prepare for severe weather. It is the heart of severe weather season. Have many ways to receive severe weather watches and warnings as we go through the week, especially on Monday with that moderate risk, level four out of five for severe weather. I'll provide an update for you tomorrow morning. So be looking out for that. And I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Sunday out there.